Special thanks to all our patrons who support the show every single week. We couldn't do it without you. Head over to patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast and subscribe today for bonus content, exclusive happy hour live chats and more. Patrons, you help keep the run, eat, drink podcast going. And we're so grateful for you. Not a patron yet? Join us today at patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast. Help support the show by using our Amazon affiliate link. Anytime you shop on Amazon for running gear, food, beverages, or anything else the little gray trucks might bring your way. Just use runeatdrink.net slash Amazon anytime you shop. It costs nothing extra. It's only one extra click, and it helps us keep the lights on and the bandwidth flowing. Just go to runeatdrink.net slash Amazon, and we thank you for your support. Hi, this is Kevin, host of the Extra Mile Podcast and the Extra Mile Podcast Jeff Galloway Edition. You are listening to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast, the podcast I listen to while I'm out on the road. Welcome to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We feature destination races from across the country. And after the race, we take you on a tour of the best local food and beverage to celebrate. So whether you are an elite runner or a back of the packer like us, You'll know the best places to accomplish, explore, and indulge on your next runcation. This is a special edition of our show, Dana. And today we welcome one of our favorite podcasters that we like to listen to when we drive to a race, when we, as long as we download it before we get on the plane, Mm -hmm. on the plane to a race. Traveling to any runcation, a long run, a short run, you name it, we love to listen to the Extra Mile Podcast and the Extra Mile Podcast Galloway Edition. And we are joined today by our friend and friend of the show, Kevin Gwynn. Yay! Host with the most. Hi. How are y'all? How are you? We're well. I'm doing, I'm very well as well. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you for coming on. you guys. We have... We yeah. have to do this more frequently. We I, do. You are, I think you're one of the first podcasters we ever had on the show. Yes. And we're, you're one of the very first that we ever met up with. Mm-hmm. Right. If not yeah. the very first. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. I think so. I remember sitting somewhere down in Atlanta at the hotel or something. And we were uh, like yes. sitting in the lobby or something recording a, an episode years ago. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And oh, in the Hilton Atlanta I remember meeting you and JD uh-huh. for the first time. Yes. Yes, together, all together. Good memories. Awesome memory. Uh, we hope to see you at that race this year, the Me Jeff too. Galloway. Knock on wood. Yes. I'll be there. Yes. Us. We, we have to make a comeback this year. <laughs> We've missed you. We've missed you. <laughs> Listen, I would have given anything to be able to get on that plane this oh, year. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I got hit with a really bad bout of norovirus, Oof, and it, it was it went around between me and several people that we were out to dinner with at, at Disney, me and too. ooh, it was rough. Yeah, we got a note from your doctor, so you guys were excused. For okay, that one, we're excused, but hopefully, but hopefully in March. Yes, St. Patrick's. It'll be a St. Patrick's Day party yeah. comeback celebration. So, uh, Kevin, would you, for those who are in the Runcation Nation who don't know uh, about you and have never met you before, would you take us outside of the world of podcasting before we get to that? Can you introduce yourself to our Runcation Nation community? Sure. My name's Kevin Gwynn. I am 66 year old father of seven wonderful kids. I've lost count of the grandkids. I want to say six, but don't hold me to it. I know I'm up to using both hands to count them. I have been running, as a matter of fact, next year, early next year, it will be coming up on my 40th anniversary of running. I think to say it's part of my life is, is probably an understatement. I live in a suburb just outside of Cincinnati, Ohio, Mm. and stuck with this or or hung up on this podcasting thing some years ago. And it's a lot of fun, as you guys know, and I've met some amazing people like the two folks I have. I see on my little computer screen right now. And that's me. So I know that our podcast 
was the brainchild of a conversation we have while walking the dogs. Yeah. How did you get the idea to start your shows? It started back in, I think, early 2006. There was a running podcast. It was very, very popular back in the day. It was called Fidipidations. And he was uh, he had started the very first, uh, what I think is the very first or one of the first virtual races. And it was a half marathon. So we were all going to train together, run together, just like your basic virtual. And um, so I got the idea and I, I reached out to the podcaster. His name's Steve. And I said, how about if we all like just send little snippets of how our races or how our training's going, what we like about it, what's working, what's not working, send it to me. I'll copy and paste them together and we'll just see how folks are doing. So we did that up until for about a six month interval up until that he had that virtual. And then the idea was I was going to move on to bigger and better things, or at least some other things. And I started getting emails from folks and they tend to like it and ask me to keep it going. So I did. That was back in 2007. And so basically, I've been doing the same thing since 2007 with the Extra Mile podcast. You're literally a podcast Ooh. pioneer because that's going all the way back that to the t- Adam Curry days yeah. of podcasting. Decades. Yeah. The, um, the very first episode of the Extra Mile published in uh, June of 2007. Wow. Wow. A pioneer. Yeah. You are a pioneer. You start making the big bucks doing this and you can't give it up. You can. It's your, <laughs> what, what do they say? It's your revenue stream outside of your day job. So you got to keep it going. Keep it going. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> or nothing like that. I don't know. I've, I was going to say not for us. No, but no. that was not, that's not the only one we listened to of yours. So back in the day, I used to, I had never heard of Run, Walk, Run. I had never even heard of Jeff Galloway, to be honest with you, back in like 2007. But I did train for marathons. I've done six, actually, I I joked that I've done six and two thirds marathon. And I just don't want to talk about the two thirds one that I did. But in in any case, that that one didn't turn out real well. But but the training back in that day used to, we used to think if you stopped to to do a walk break, you weren't really running. So I'm from that old decrepit generation of folks yep. who, who had that, that, that silly thoughts. But I, I was finding that every single time I trained for a marathon or even a half, I wasn't having any fun when mm-hmm. it, it was the, the training was taking, I would take almost all weekend to do my training and I'd come home. And I couldn't do anything. I was laying around all day long. I was, I was going through a bunch of injuries. So finally I decided I would quit doing marathons period. And one day I was listening to a guy who's become a close friend, Chris Russell, who does the Run, Run, Live podcast. And he had this guy on as an interview. His name is Jeff Galloway. And he starts talking about this, taking short walk breaks and how you can do that and still live life and train for a marathon and actually run faster and feel better. I'm like, I I don't know about this. So I, I bought his book. I started reading it. And I remember I was in, I was reading his book in bed one night and I turned to my wife and I explained it to her. And I said, what, what if he's right? What if I can really run another marathon and I don't have to walk down the stairs backwards for a week and I can still go play with the kids after I do a long run? And so right then, and I, and I even told my wife this, I said, I'm going to send this guy, this Jeff guy, an email. And I'm going to say, Jeff, here's what I do. Here's what I'd like to do. And I said, I'd like you to coach me, e-coach me to a marathon. And we will record everything. You and I will talk every few weeks and you tell me what to do. I'll tell you, come back and say, here's how it went. And we'll just throw it out there on a podcast. And I told my wife, if he replies and says, yeah, let's do it. Then I'm going to train for one more marathon. If he, if I never hear from him, which is what I would have bet a lot of money on, then I'm done. That's just God's way of saying, give it up, kid. You're not doing it anymore. So I sent him the email and it wasn't two days later, I got one back. And he said, Kevin, I love this idea. Let's do it. And my first thought was, oh, my God, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> Dang it. So, I got to train for a marathon. I can hear his voice in my head, too. <laughs> Jeff? Yes. 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 I can hear it. Let's do it. So, so positive. Um, so that's what we did. Jeff started e-coaching me. About every three weeks, we'd get on and say, okay, for the next three weeks, here's what I've got. A long run of five miles and I've got a magic mile. We'd go through what his plan was and how I used it, the issues I had. And he gave his advice and we did the whole thing. And I want to say there were 10 episodes of that up until I ran a marathon at the end. And then same deal. 
I started getting emails saying, hey, keep this thing going, keep this thing going. So that one, I, we published the very first Extra Mile Podcast Galloway edition in March of 2011. So Jeff and I have been doing that podcast since 2011 that just centers on pretty much nothing except run, walk, run, period. And that's how mm. long I've been doing it as well. I'll never use anything else. I think we feel the same way. Oh, absolutely. And, we, and, and discovering that. By the way, we come from that also that same generation. If you, if you take a walk break, you're not really running. And what an eye opener. It, it was yeah. to find Jeff and a, a relief because mm-hmm. I, we don't have stairs, but I understand the whole having to walk backwards and not engage the quads after those yeah. kinds of runs. Just sitting down and then getting up. I was going to say using yeah. the restroom. <laughs> or that. Yeah. So you've been, you are a pioneer of decades for podcasting and you have it available everywhere podcasts are available, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So he's not like us, like with the video feed where we have Spotify that doesn't like our feed because we have video. I want oh, to I change just, it. Yeah. I got it. I don't have the face like you guys do for no. video. When, when we started, we were doing the courses and everything. And it's funny what you learn over the time that you produce your podcasts, and I'm sure this is true for you, that you have come, uh, we thought, oh, we'll show off the course when we go to a race and people will watch this. And a lot of people would say, oh yeah, I listened to it. And there are these long stints of music where you see a course and it, we just didn't doesn't, know. <laughs> doesn't translate. Doesn't. We didn't discover that. <laughs> we were just listening to you. And and right, that's right. how we became audio audio. Primarily. Primarily, but we still have video in there from the olden, our olden days, mm-hmm. our, back in the day. The nice thing about audio is that I can listen to it anywhere, in my car mm-hmm. or go for a run and just plug my earplugs in and boom. Yeah. You, you can't watch while you're driving. No. You can try. It doesn't mm-hmm. work out well. No. Oh, no. I don't. But that is a great thing because I'm a big fan of listening to mm-hmm. I, i've said it spoken word audio yes for me mm-hmm. on runs gets me out of my head gets me i'm not thinking about how much i hate running in the moment <laughs> and yeah. i'm thinking about the conversation yeah. and i'm putting myself there as i'm a participant in the conversation True. when you think about your shows what is a great episode for my next long run that i should download for each one of those shows and why what do you think? Let's see. I'll tell you what. If, if I stop, first of all, I've, there's been a lot of episodes. I, and I, I honestly, I didn't start counting it at one, two, three, four, five. But I'm pretty sure I'm somewhere close to 750 or something. Wow. Something like that. I'm certainly above the 500 mark. So for me to say, hey, go listen to this one would be a little silly. But I, I'll tell you what, I will point to one. And it was one that, it was the Jeff Galloway edition. It was episode 8.3. I'm certainly happy to send you a link to that. But um, I started at some point numbering these things. So they were each season. So this would have been season eight, episode three of season eight. So it's 8.3 and blah, blah, blah. If you can follow the math on that one. Sure. But but I didn't start. I didn't start numbering them. It was more like year 10 or 12. But anyway, (laughs) I've been lucky enough. Because Mr. Galloway is part of my podcast and his name will open up doors for you. And I think you guys know what I mean. I've been lucky enough to have some really amazing guests on that podcast. Mm. And on that particular podcast, I I have a doctor by the name of Mark Kukazella, right? And I would point your listeners to that one because, and this is not hyperbole. I'm just going to say this, like I said it then, the episode could save your life. Now, I know that sounds a little silly, but hear me out. Dr. Mark is a professor at the West Virginia University School of Medicine, and he designs, he's actually retired lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Air Force. And while he was in it, he would design the the exercise program for the cadets. He's also a very competitive runner, owns a couple of running stores. So he's got some really neat things in common with Jeff. But in any case... This particular, I've had him on a couple of times, but this particular episode was recorded shortly after our friend, Mr. Galloway, had his heart event. He had a heart attack and 
So the, the first thing that went through my mind when I heard that happened to Jeff was, what the heck? If you look at Jeff and see his lifestyle, he is the he is literally the last person in my life that I would pick to have a heart event. Absolutely. Same. And so I brought Mark, Dr. Mark, back on the show. Uh, and I'll, I'll summarize this and just say, I, I basically asked him, Dr. Mark, what? I, I it, Now Jeff has had this event. I've had other friends in my life that, that have just, just had a heart event out, out of nowhere. And some of them are lucky enough to recover. Some of them, God bless them, just died on the spot. I said, what's the answer? How do I know? How do I know that I'm not going to, that's not going to happen to me? Is there anything? And he said, yeah, he, he said, there's one answer to that. And he said, and, and people don't know about it enough. And so he pointed out a very easy thing that you could do. I should look this up because it's a calcium score. And oh. it's a, you, you basically go into the, into a, you don't even have to do it at the hospital. They do these at outpatient centers, it costs $99. And it took, I went and had it done. They basically, they, they take a, a picture of your heart. And I guess where there is blockage of any sort, the body will form calcium deposit, right? And so this thing will show up the calcium deposit on your heart. And then they'll score from zero to something. I don't know. It's like a thousand or something like that based on how much you have. And he said, that will tell you immediately how bad your arteries are right now. He even brought up the fact that if you're a, a fighter pilot in the U.S. Air Force, you have to get a score of zero, meaning no calcium whatsoever, or they'll they won't let you fly anymore. Oh wow! They have, they have a nickname for it in the Air Force, and I can't remember exactly what he called it. But that's my point. I would say, listen to that episode, take it to heart, and um, really, this one really touches me because I've had probably ten or twelve listeners who said I listened to it, I, I went and had it done. Insurance will not cover it. It's nine. It, at least every place I've gone, it's 99 bucks, which is not the end of the world. You get the results that day. And then some of them have said, hey, thank you very much. No harm, no foul. But I've had a couple of them saying, I'm seeing a cardiologist now. We're getting this taken care of based on what I found from that. So anyway, I, I would point you to that episode and just it's probably a couple hours long. But the interview with Dr. Mark is more like an hour long. And uh, it really could save your life, man. And I'm sure it would be just so, like you say, it when you listen to spoken word content, it gets you out of, oh, I'm thinking about the pain or I'm thinking about the, mm -hmm. the rest of the mileage that I have to do. And that those negative, the, the monkey brain yeah. things like Jeff yeah. says, like you, like yeah. he has talked about on your show, Kevin, but it would, I think it, it sounds like it would be just so engaging because everybody I think has fear about what could be an unknown or a silent killer? Literally. Yeah, it, it, it's called a coronary artery calcium score, CAC. And you're really right, Amy. That, mm. that And it is engaging, especially the way Dr. Mark describes it. You know, mm. um, anyway, I'd give that one to listen to if you get nothing else out of it. You can skip the other 750, but listen to that one. No, we no. can't skip the other 750. Mm -mm. We've no. got, you've got to give us some other recommendations. Yes. And I will ask for this because a lot of times I will wake up on a race morning and I will be very nervous. Yes, I trust my training because I trust Jeff Galloway and all of the training and the e-coaching and the books and everything. But when I am nervous, when I just need to get motivated and get out there and just know I'm going to ace this. I'm going to nail this race. What is an episode uh, of your, one of your shows or both of your shows that you would say is a great pre-race episode? We're in the car, we're on the bus, we're at, in the corrals. We, it's what we should listen to. Oh, that's a hard one. I, I would say check out some of the podcasts that are at or are really close to a couple of the destination races that I do every year, such as Jeff's race in March, because leading up to those races, it's really inspiring for folks to to tell us, especially as you get closer to that race. The, the Galloway podcast will really center on Jeff's race. It used to be in December. It's in March now. And the runners will all be talking about their long runs or the tapering and how the, the training that they've done 
is really make them feel confident about the race that they're getting ready to go to. And that just picks me up when I hear other people talking about what a great training cycle they've had mm. and the confidence that it builds in them. Um, yes. Or overcoming challenges. People who talk about overcoming challenges like that training is never linear. Yeah. So right. that's, so the, I like that. The extra mile is good at that one because you'll end up with, I'm just going to make the number up 10, 10 or 12, what I would call regular lovable extra miles, folks that send in submissions a lot. Right. And you get to, you, you'll get to, it's funny. You get to know these folks, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like you're watching a sitcom on TV and after you've watched it for six months, it's yeah. Oh, there's Ross. I love Ross. I know everything about Ross. And you just get to know these people mm -hmm. and, and they will tell you, in excruciating detail about some injuries that they're going through, or maybe some a health scare they had and how it's affecting, I couldn't run for this month or I couldn't do this and, and exactly how they're getting, what they're doing to get by. And it's mm -hmm. amazing how first lift you up and knowing these folks are going through this and they're not giving up mm -hmm. and you might get an idea to how, how to help in your life as well. Yeah. yeah Things absolutely. you never think of. The exactly. closeness that you develop with runners through communities like yours, mm. audiences like yours, like the Runcation Nation. We've talked about it before. Some of the nicest people you'll ever meet, you've never met. And it's incredible to see that. And I'm glad because it, it goes to that. I think that there is something there with runners and that yeah. shared experience of having to gut it out on a crappy run <laughs> we've all been there we understand it and, yep. and you have a certain amount of empathy with with your fellow runner and then what that can yeah. do for you and runners know what it can run walkers what know what it can do for you in your life outside of running too yeah runners are just the greatest people in the world and what you guys are doing and what i've tried to do is just Build that community and make friends, not people just in your neighborhood or on your street. You see why you're out running, but I've got friends in all, literally all over the planet. We have folks from Sweden that came in for the, the, the last Galloway thing, um, oh. Finland, and just it's just crazy. And now we send emails back and forth like they live next door to me. Oh. It's pretty cool. It's the word is community. Yeah. And that's the one I love so much about this. Yeah. Now, whether it's community building with your fellow runner, whether it's hobnobbing with race royalty like Jeff Galloway, mm -hmm. if you were giving an elevator pitch and saying, check out my show, what's the one episode that you would point somebody towards to, to get them hooked and coming back for more? I'll tell you what, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to point to the Jeff Galloway. And, and I know a lot of your listeners, I'm assuming do listen, do use run, walk, run, but probably not all of them. Same deal with my extra mile folks. Now, I think the Galloway folks, they probably all do. Obviously, you're not going to listen to a podcast called the Galloway edition if you don't, but uh, I'm going to want to point to instead of instead of one episode, I'm going to point to a small series. In, and it is that series. And I'm going to aim this to folks who are thinking, what about this Galloway thing? Like I was that night when I was talking to my wife and I was asking the question here's the powerful question you can use not just for Jeff Galloway, but in your life, just in these two sentences, what if? I, so what if I can really do this? And what if this thing really works? So what I would point you to is, and I can send you a link, is that that short series we did with Jeff, the very beginning, and we called it, I was basically the guinea pig. I, we called it the, 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 the uh, Galloway Experiment, the Extra Mile Podcast Experiment. And mm. Jeff will step you through from, from literally like laying on the couch to finishing a marathon mm. without any regard to what the time is. It doesn't matter. You will finish a marathon and, and you will 75, 80% chance that when you do that, you're crying. It's just amazing. That feeling you guys know it. It's just amazing. But in, in any case, he'll step you from, from beginning to, to the very end and he will help you answer the question what if and then it's called the extra mile podcast experiment and it was like the first 10 episodes we did with him so powerful so powerful it, it, it really is get this and even if you don't just get involved in this community i'm begging you because it will mm. change it will change your life it's That's true 
It's yeah. true. Right. And your perspective and that whole what if question. Oh, yeah. And it's so hard to ask you this because I think that if I were in your shoes and I was lucky enough to talk with Jeff Galloway on every episode of the Extra Mile podcast, Jeff Galloway edition, it would be hard to choose a favorite interview uh, segment. So this may be a loaded question to say, you've talked to a lot of people in addition to Jeff Galloway. Mm -hmm. What would be the favorite interview segment you Yeah, that ever one done? is tough. Dr. Mark, I talked about. Uh, his, is, his is amazing just because it is, regardless of whether or not you're a runner, it can really save your life. And it's a life-changing lesson. But I've been lucky enough to, I have this propensity. I have this love of entrepreneurs. I, I huh? love people who start businesses in their basements, in their garages, as a side job. Usually they start that way. It's just something that they love. And so I try to have on a lot of those kinds of folks. John Fournier, who started, oh. who started, got this great idea about squish bands, which is just a, a tiny little device, a squishy thing you hold in your hand and wipe the sweat. Huh. Friend of I mean, ours and friend deal. of the show. We yeah. love John. Well, John's just even beyond even beyond the things John invents, he's just a wonderful person. So mm -hmm. I have John on every now and then. He invented it. God love him. His kids are helping him out. He was doing this in the garage. He's literally got a couple of little old ladies outside of Atlanta, Georgia, that sew these things for him. And so God bless him. I've been lucky enough to interview. And pardon me, because I'm going to screw up some names. I don't remember all the names. The, the guy who invented the, if you're a Galloway runner, you have to have a little interval timer. The guy who invented those, Ooh. Um, he came on the show. He's actually a pilot for Delta, for crying out loud. He does this thing on the side. Huh, it's just no. crazy. Um, know that some other amazing people that, that have invented the turtle towel. That's another product. I yes. Love. We yeah. love that. Who wants to go for a run, a, a race and get in your car all hot and sweaty on your nice seat. So he invented this little towel you put down. It's great. Just a lot of those kinds of folks. It's just inspiring to me. And the, 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 the folks who invented or who run the Coros company, the Coros GPS watches, which I really like for a lot of reasons. Mm. There's just a lot of, that's who I try to reach out to. Anybody who makes a cool running product, someone may really like a lot. Yeah. And what you find is these folks are just regular people that just had a great idea. And, and the difference between them and me is that not only did they come up with a great idea, they had a passion for it and just somehow sat down and just made it work. God they decided, it. they made the yeah. commitment. And I yeah. think that's what you do when you run. When you decide you commit to a marathon, to a distance like that, yeah. right? Yeah. And maybe that's why that is so such a passion of yours to pursue those people and how interesting those interviews are when we hear them on your show. It's, I think they are related because I'm it's- in, I'm in awe of those folks. Yeah, because it's never a linear process and you have challenges and you have to reinvent and you have mm -hmm. to, and I think that in a race, you hit a wall and you have to reinvent your mental strategy to get through it, Jeff talks about, and I just, and so it's great to hear that. And I, I see so many parallels in that f from your show. And the common denominator with all these folks is they're runners too. Mm -hmm. And so that- by default means that they're great people. They're just amazing people. And it will answer any question you ask them and stay on as long as you want. Oh, just great folks. Yes. Runners are the best, aren't they? They are. They are. They, they absolutely are. are. They are. And speaking of running, mm. you're a runner. We're runners and we are all, we'll travel for runs. Yes. We do it so that we can also indulge in that local food and beverage. But over time, over the, over the, better part of the last decade, we've come to have some can't miss runs mm -hmm. and the destination is the thing for us for some of these races. What is that location and that race for you and why? There's probably, first of all, to set this up, I, I don't race like you guys do. I don't race that much anymore. 
I do love them. I've got kitties around the house that, that still play sports and all that good stuff. But so I'll get back to it. But I just don't. There's really only a couple races I do each year. One of them is, is Jeff's half marathon. We spoke about it earlier a little bit in Atlanta in March. I, I try very hard. I think he's done 10. They've come up on 11 years. And I've oh. gone up. I think I've hit all of them but one. Oh. Um, there was one year I just couldn't make it down. That's a destination race that I try never to miss. That's a homecoming. For anyone who's a Jeff Galloway run, walk, runner, because probably 95% of the folks in that race are run walkers. There's beepers everywhere. Yes. And it's like we're all family. One That's big true. family. There's a few thousand people there that know what you're going through and, and love you for it. So yeah. That's one. And Atlanta is a great city. You can go down there. Everybody talks about the Atlanta traffic. And this I fly into Atlanta because you can get to that Atlanta airport from any spot on the planet. So it's easy to get to relatively. Fair. True. And once you get there, you get on this train and for two dollars or something ridiculous, it takes you straight to the hotel. And I don't rent a car, so the logistics are easy. There's so much that going on in that town besides the race. So that's one of them. The other one is, is what's called the bird in hand, which is in a tiny little town in Pennsylvania. And it's just it's an Amish country and it's just the, the food that they serve there is amazing. It's all homemade Amish food and potato salad and, and barbecue chicken. And it's, uh. it's, I'm getting hungry already. And the race right? itself is beautiful. <laughs> that sounds it's awesome. Oh, we, that's, beautiful. That one's been on our bucket uh, list. Really? Yeah, ever, no. Like we heard about it through you. Mm -hmm. And. And we've been meaning to go and we've had to push it a couple of years because of life. Yeah. But the that one sounds absolutely incredible. And we are, of course, big fans of Jeff's race. I oh, mean, yes. Can't beat that. But you could, I don't think you could ask for two different, two more different races in terms of feel and probably yes. terrain. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, the, the terrain is, at least for elevation, is, is similar because neither one is flat. Uh, Atlanta's not flat, and the, the countryside and outside of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, is not flat. But the scenery is gorgeous on both. One's more more urban, one's rural, but they're both beautiful. The folks that show up are beautiful. The food is amazing, and uh, that one's the in hand is a little bit harder to get to, but it oh. is well worth the trip if you can get there. We would say that the hills are more challenging for us Floridians at Bird in Hand. <laughs> you've done Atlanta, you've done just race. So mm -hmm. I would say it's very similar. It's just the scenery is different. That's okay. all you're going to be I looking out pastures and things like that. I feel good but, hearing this from Kevin. I do too. I do. I mean, Jeff does like to brag about the fact that it's technically a downhill race because you, yes. but there's a big asterisk there with that statement. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yes. We love but Jeff, but, um, but I'm not buying that one. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. Hey, now, okay, Kevin mentioned, you have mentioned, like, the barbecue and the potato yep. salad and all of that. So we had you mention, you, you just mentioned two races, two must-do races. So after the running is done anywhere, uh, post-race, what is the favorite meal to go get and where tell us all about it like i said i don't do a heck of a lot but the bird in hand that i just had that what they will do when you finish the bird in hand picture you're coming in to a finish line from across a valley through a farmer's big farmland and everything you finish into a big park and there's a huge tent set up and it's filled with just wonderful Amish people that have got full spread for you. Brats, mats, hot dogs, hamburgers, barbecue chicken, homemade uh, desserts. That are, and, and they let you in. There's no tickets. You just, you finish, you walk in there and eat it. And if, if you've got your family with you, they go in and eat. Everybody who's there goes in and gets this, this free meal. It's amazing. That one's probably my favorite. But in any of the other races, what I like to do is when I finish the race, I'll, similar to what you guys do, I'll, I'll grab a bagel or banana or something, but mm. the, I'll try to find a local, uh, I call it a dive, but what it really is just a local spot that's not a chain place and where you can get some homemade and, and real food and, and taste the wares of the community. That's what's so cool about what you guys what you guys do, because I know you have a passion for that. And that I do too. Mm. And uh, 
Yes. So anyway, that's the big one for me. You know, I mean, we're talking about food right now, and I feel like we have just we just finished talking to podcasters from the Will Run For podcast, and they mentioned mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the Flying Pig. Yeah. Oh which, yeah. Which you have done. Oh yeah. Okay. And they say there's some situation with chili. Can you, do you know anything about this? Yeah, I know a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. I have an affection for the flying pig marathon. As a matter of fact, I was involved in it. I was involved the first 10, 12 years of, of that. In fact, it's funny you mentioned it because I was just at one of my daughter's soccer games the other night and ran into Iris Simpson Bush, who's the race organizer, the director of that race and sat and gad to her about that race. That's a fun race. The volunteers are the best volunteers I've seen at any race that I've ever been to. And, and, and that helps a lot, too, when you're running along. These volunteers are screaming and hollering and, and giving you all the encouragement. And I think that's one of the things you'll love about Flying Pig. Cincinnati has what we call Cincinnati Chili. And the big one in town is called Skyline, Skyline Chili. And it is our McDonald's. There's one on every block. And you just, it's, I want to say it's an acquired taste. You either, you either love it or you don't love it. People make fun of it. I was watching a big football game this weekend and the, the guys were in town from ESPN and they were all kind of making fun of our, our chili because the, it doesn't look like chili. It's very runny and you put it on either spaghetti, you pour it on top of spaghetti and you load it with um, chili. I mean, with uh, cheese, with mm -hmm. grated cheese or um, it's, you can get a three-way. That's a three-way. You add onions. That's a four-way. It's good stuff. I think you'd like it, but it is an acquired taste. You throw it on a hot dog and it's called a Coney dog. And Ooh. they put a little bit of mustard. They put the, it's good stuff. But it's if you stuff. ever come through Cincinnati, like I said, there's one on every block. It's called Skyline. Give it a shot. There you go. There you go. Yeah. See the insider knowledge. You got the info. Right? Yeah. Huh? I'll send you some. I'll send you some. And Ooh. you guys can do the taste test. Ooh. How's that? We'll do it live. You can buy it at the, at the, the local grocery store, our Kroger here, sells it in cans. So really? You just have to heat it up, throw it on a hot dog, or, or make your own spaghetti and hmm. grated, grated cheese, and we'll see how you like it. Mm -hmm. Very That's nice. 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 I love it. Mm -hmm. It has beans? No. You can get it with beans, but basically, no. It, it, Traditional. They have this secret recipe, and it actually has chocolate in it, chocolate and cinnamon. So, like a mole um, almost or something. Yeah. It's very, the, the ground beef is very fine, mm -hmm. very fine ground beef. Okay. See, look, we'll we're see. getting inside knowledge. Yeah. I like this. Cincinnati. Somewhere down there in Florida, they have them now. I can't remember what city. I believe Fort Myers has one. Really? They Where, used to. Where's that? We have to find it. Okay. Yeah. We're now we have homework. Indeed. We yeah, have, exactly. Now we That'll have That'll be better than me send you. I'll send you some, but it's better when you just pull right up to the window and, and get ask it. for three-way <laughs> three no I'm not an onion guy, so mine's a three-way no onions, please. Okay. This is good. <laughs> this is good. So now <clears throat> what about beverages for you? Post race beverages. The, uh, you know what I try to find on, uh, for the beverage is um, I'm not a huge um, partaker of alcohol, but what I do like after a race is to find a local IPA and see if I can get the coldest IPA I can get my hands on from a local brewery. Ooh. And other than I'm not picky, I want very cold and I want local. I don't want to buy a beer I could get at my local pony keg here. Exactly. Something different. Something yep, different. Yep, yep. Where's Once the again, probably, probably brewed by some guys in their garage business. Like that. There's, listen, there's a phenomenal brewery in Atlanta for those that might be doing Jeff's race at some point. And mm -hmm. they do have a delicious cold IPA that they made in their garage. I believe it's called Karate in the Garage. <laughs> oh, are we talking about, is that Atlanta? Yeah. That's Karate Atlanta. in the Garage? Yeah, that is the uh, fine folks at Scofflaw Brewing. Oh, because I thought, oh, I thought that was a Jacksonville thing. No? Oh, gosh, I'm so, see, yeah. He's got, he knows his breweries. Okay, okay, okay. So we'll have to get some of that. We'll have to try some of that. Uh, do you have a favorite that you've had? From or just no. that's just what yeah, just, comes to mind. As long as it's local, as long as it's local. I don't have the memory like Dana has. I don't. I don't remember. 
I, I, I am a storehouse of useless knowledge. No, no, <laughs> you could use it on, say, mm. Jeopardy, right? Yeah, yeah. True. That's what I'm saying. We've talked about running. We've talked about eating. We've talked about drinking. Kevin, what do you have coming up on your show that you've got to let the Runcation Nation ro- know about? The only thing I've got coming up, it and and as as fall gets here, we'll, Jeff and I will start talking about run walk and and um, specific to um, his race in March because we not only all as you obviously you two know this very well we not only we have a meetup down there and it has grown and grown it started the first time the first year we had it which was like I don't know 11, 12 years ago we had about six people meet at the hotel and we walked down the street to a restaurant and sat and just gabbed the night away. And last year we had a meetup of, of over 50 people in a big banquet room at a hotel and, mm. and just talked the night away. So we'll, we've got some planning for that. Jeff and I have decided that we go through these cycles. We did the experiment I was talking about. And we also did one that was, that would step people through from the beginning to the end of a half marathon. So we try to come up with little ideas. And, and I think what we're going to do next is to start from scratch because we're getting so many newer listeners that don't know what this run, walk, run thing is. So I think we're going to start from scratch. And if you're at all interested in what it is, how it works, we'll, Jeff will we'll start talking about how he came up with the idea, mm. um, how it's evolved over the years. That's the neat thing. If you buy one of his books, like his first book, which I think was Marathon, the Marathon, You Can Do It. It's probably, oh, geez, I'm going to make this up 25, 30 years old by now. But it, if you get one of the old versions, it's quite different from one if you buy today because Jeff uses all this data mm. that he gets from his runners and he'll change things. Cla- classic example, it used to be back in the day, he used to religiously say you would your walk breaks would be one minute long. And I don't know if that's how you guys used to start it, but that I always did like a four minute run or a three minute run and a one minute walk, that kind of thing. But a few years ago, through his studies, he decided that anything over 30 second walk break, you would hit the law of diminishing returns or you weren't getting much back from that extra. So now you buy a book tomorrow and it's going to say 30 seconds. Don't do anything more than, unless you're brand new, in which case he'll have you, he may have you you walk for 10 minutes and then just run for a few seconds. I, right. But it's at some point when you get to, up to speed, your walk breaks will basically be 30 seconds long. But my mm-hmm. point is we're going to start the next episode and go through a series and bring people right up to speed. And hopefully mm-hmm. they'll all show up in March at his race in Atlanta. And we'll have some, a new, a new bucket of friends to, to talk to. You talked about Jeff's race. And then you talked about bird in hand that uh-huh. are, are Dana is very bling driven. True story. Yes. He's, he's very what? He's very bling driven. I'm he driven loves by the medals. medals. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. I was a you, raccoon in a previous life, I think. <laughs> Whoa, shiny things. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But <laughs> but now <laughs> what would be your favorite medal that attracts you, know you to? The the only medal I could point to, I probably you guys might not like to hear this, but I don't even get medals much anymore because I've got so many of them. I feel so badly that I bring them home, I throw them in a drawer, and they sit there. I don't have a, I don't hang the medals out anymore. I did early on when I was doing, back in the day when I was doing marathons, and I have some pretty good medals from some really big ones back in the day before they actually became that big. Chicago, back when you didn't have to know somebody to get in, or Marine Corps Marathon, when all you had to do was send them your entry and you got in if your check cleared you're in that kind of thing even peach tree i've run that several times but you didn't have to it wasn't an act of god to get into that one but <laughs> in, in, in any case i don't the only the recent medals would be like from bird in hand which is it's really innovative they take the the amish each all year long when they when they reshoe their horses they save the old horseshoes and then they they file them down and it just it's so they're real horseshoes they put a little strap on them and there's a little it's in, in, embroidered with what year it is and that one's of course if you're flying that one's really heavy and might put you over the limit so you got to be careful with that one pack light person. pack it's light cool. yeah you okay. guys you both need one of those i hope we do. next we september do. absolutely next september, yes we'll get up there. i hope so i hope yeah. so kevin it's been phenomenal information i yeah. love talking running eating and drinking with great people i love your podcast. And I love the fact that we've gotten to know you through running and through podcasting. Mm -hmm. Do us a favor, 
let our listeners know where they can find your show and how to connect with you on social media. Yep. So the the easiest way is just wherever you're listening to your podcast, go in and search for the Extra Mile Podcast or search for the Extra Mile Podcast Galloway Edition. And either one or both of those should pop right up. They're available everywhere. Just subscribe. Give it a, a little bit of a listen. See what you think. Particularly for the Extra Mile one, I would say almost like you pretend like you're watching a new TV show that just started. Give it a little time. Give it uh, two or three episodes so that you'll hear some of these folks come back. And like I said, you'll get to know them and you'll, they'll make you chuckle and they'll make you, might make you mad, might make you happy, whatever, but you'll get to know them and they'll become friends. And, and, and then turn on your little recorder on your smartphone and submit something. Tell us what you're doing. I get all these people all the time saying, I, you know, I listen all the time, but I've never submitted because I never thought I had anything to say. I'm politely going to cry BS on that one. You do have something to say. And even if it's just, here's what I'm doing right now. We want it where you're calling from, what kind of, how long have you been running? What's, what are you training for? That kind of thing. I'm mm -hmm. a Galloway runner. Or I've never heard of this Galloway guy. Just tell us what's on your mind. What are you thinking about when you're out for your run and send it to me. And mm -hmm. so, let's join the community. I think we are, I am most guilty of that. I, I am a listener, mm -hmm. lurker, but lurker, I call them lurker. <laughs> yeah, I used to. I for a while I was reaching out to some of these lurkers. I would find out who they were, and then I would get their picture off of Facebook, and I put it on a little, I'd, I'd paste it onto a milk carton, and I'd put it out there and say, "Hey, I'm coming after you. I want to, I want you to. So don't make me come after you. Okay. Amy, All right. I can. All right. I have a picture of you. I can put on a milk carton. And I know. I'm gonna. You. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna warm up. I'm gonna rev up the recorder, and go. and give a submission. I will. I will. So Kevin, we can't thank you enough for your shows, both the extra mile podcast and the extra mile podcast Galloway edition and for being such a supporter of our show and everything we do. And we just really cannot wait to accomplish, explore and indulge with you really soon. Thanks so much for having me on. I love what you guys are doing. Thanks what you're doing. And uh, thanks for being my friend. I feel like I feel like that guy from TV. Who is it? Won't you be my friend? Um, but anyway, you guys are both super. And I appreciate what you do. Right back at you. Thanks, Thank Kevin. You. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We're having another great year thanks to your support. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Run, Eat, Drink podcast. And on Twitter we run, eat, drink pod. You can also give us a call at 941-677-2733 or send us an email at info at runeatdrink.net. Visit our website at runeatdrink.net and click on the subscribe link so you don't miss a minute. Find out how you can support the show at patreon.com slash runeatdrinkpodcast accomplish, explore, and indulge along with us. We'll talk to you next time.